Hello everyone, welcome again. In this software testing tutorial, we are going to learn about the differences between functional and non-functional testing. So we have already covered in detail about the functional and non-functional testing along with examples. So if you haven't watched the previous tutorial, please go through and watch those first before you come into this particular tutorial and understand what are the differences between functional and non-functional testing. Now, most of the differences um, you would have, you will learn in the previous tutorial as well. But in this one, I'll clarify from interview point of view, what you need to explain to the interviewer in case somebody asks you about what are the differences between functional and non-functional testing. Now, I have noted down the key differences that you can explain in the interview, and this should be good enough for you to basically you know, explain and crack this particular question when it is asked in the interview. Okay, so let's start with the first point here. So what functional testing does is it checks the functionality um, or the requirement. So basically, when we say functionality or the requirements, so requirements are uh, being given by the customer. So if Say for example, uh, you are an organization or you have a, you are working within a team and you are working for any client or the customer who wants some website or e-commerce website to, to be developed. So that customer will give you the requirement and the requirement could be the registration, um, you know, adding items, uh, checkout, okay? So checkout could be one, payment, so on the high level, these could be some of the high level requirements. Now, when you are verifying these requirements, then that functionality or the functional verification, say for example, as a tester, I'll click on register link, I'll provide all my user details um, and then click on register button. And if the registration is successful and I'm redirected to the dashboard page, then that sort of testing is the functional testing or verifying the functional requirements okay so verifying the functionality or the requirement is the functional testing now when we talk about the non-functional testing then it the non-functional testing verifies the non-functional aspect or non-functional uh, the performance of that particular functionality so now say for example registration for the functional testing i am just concerned about whether the registration is happening successfully or not. When we talk about the non-functional testing, I'm concerned how much time it takes for a user to register. So once he clicks on, once he fills all the information or all the data into the registration form and clicks on register button, how much time it takes for the user from clicking the register button to be redirected to the dashboard page. So because that there is a processing that happens at the server end uh, in the back background, after user clicks on registration button, uh, the user gets registered or entries are added into the database. He is given a session ID or the user ID and then redirected to the dashboard page. So if you are verifying that performance of the functionality that you are testing manually, then that is non-functional testing. So non-functional testing checks performance of the functionality. So we have um, taken example, uh, taken an example of the registration for the functional testing and similar example for the non-functional testing, right? So what you will verify in the non-functional testing for the same functionality. So you'll verify the response time, you'll verify how the system behaves or what is the, you know, um, uh, response time or uh, reliability when there are multiple users accessing the same functionality or there is a lot many users accessing the application, right? So that is basically checking the performance of the functionality. So that is non-functional testing. Second point is validate the functional aspect of the software. So functional aspect as we see registration. So when you are, you know, manually filling, uh, clicking on the registration link, filling out the data and registering, that's the functional aspect of it. Non-functional is as we have covered in the first part, non-functional aspect of the same functionality, how much response time or what is the response time for actual user registration? How much time it takes 
once user clicks on register button to actually process the whole application and send the response back to the user to actually uh, register the user and send the response back to the user right another example say for example uh, payment so i have added all the items in the cart as a uh, as an end user uh, or a person who wants to buy items on the e-commerce website and then i clicked on payment okay so i provided my credit card details or debit card details and clicked on pay after clicking on pay how much time it took to actually display me the message success uh, payment successful and get me the order detail right or order number so that is the non-functional aspect of the ordering functionality or the payment functionality right so when i am testing the functional aspect of the payment functionality i'm just worried about providing all the details and then verifying whether payment is successful or not i'm not concerned whether the payment has been successful within 30 seconds or one minute or two minutes but in the non-functional aspect or in non-functional testing i am worried about or i am concerned about how much time it takes to actually perform that particular operation okay so that is non-functional testing second point so it validates the non-functional aspects of the software third point is basically focus on user requirements right so the most of the focus in on the user requirements so whatever requirement functional requirement user will provide you uh, so if i'm the end user um, or normal public is the end user for example in case of gmail uh, or Facebook, social media website, we end users are, our normal public is the end user, right? So based on market research, there'll be, you know, some um, analysis by the companies, uh, done by the companies, and Facebook will implement those new functionalities. But if it is an organization who wants a software developed, then they'll provide the organization to the, uh, they'll provide the requirements to the organization who is developing software for them. So in that case, I'll, if I'm the organization who wants software to be developed, I am the customer, I'll provide the requirement to the organization and they'll send, uh, they'll implement the software for me. So the focus on the functional testing is whatever requirement I'll provide for the software to be built. Okay. In case of e-commerce websites, so for example, I want user registration using email. That's one of the requirement. If I want user registration using Facebook, Google account as well, that's another requirement. So if in the functional testing, the organization will focus on the actual user requirement that I'll provide. So whether those requirements or those functionalities are working, whether registration is actually working, they are not concerned about the performance of the registration, right? So the third point in the non-functional testing is it focuses on the non-functional requirement or user's expectation. Now, NFRs, non-functional requirement and user expectation, this is important to you know, understand when we talk about NFR. So when I, as a customer, provide the requirement, I'll provide the functional requirement, user requirements. So for example, registration using email, registration using Facebook account, registration using, uh, you know, Google account. And then I'll also provide non-functional requirement for those requirements. So for example, for registration, I'll mention to the customer that for up to 5,000 concurrent users on my e-commerce website, I want the response time of registration functionality not to be more than five seconds. If that is the requirement or that is the non-functional aspect, then that is what non-functional requirement is. Now, user expectation is in the case, say for example, I'm the normal public and, um, you know, or even if I'm the customer, so I expect the software to respond in particular or uh, the performance should be, you know, as per expectation. It shouldn't be like when I'm trying to register, it takes a minute to send me the response or register me as a user. That's not what the usual user expectation is. But user expectation is more relevant when uh, they're, they're, the functionality is being built by the end users, for example, users of Facebook, right? So if I'm accessing Facebook, my user expectation is that within seconds, if I launch app, Facebook should open for me. If it's taking 30 seconds or a minute to open the app, I it is not fulfilling my expectation, right? So in the non-functional requirement or non-functional testing, my 
core focus is on non-functional requirement of the functionality or the requirement or the user expectation, right? So in terms of user expectation, whether end user will be happy with the performance that we provide uh, in the application uh, for the application or not. So that's the non-functional testing versus functional testing. Then the point four is can be easily done manually. So functional testing can be very easily done manually. So we can, you know, launch the e-commerce website, click on register button, provide the details. So all that is possible. You can, you know, test e-commerce website in any of the browser or if there is an app, Android app or iOS app, you can quickly install it and launch the app manually and test it, right? So you can do it manually as well as automated very easily. But in terms of non-functional testing, it is very, very difficult to do manually, okay? The reason is, say for example, your customer requirement is that 5,000 concurrent users and the response time should be less than five seconds. So if you want to do it manually, you have to basically ask 5,000 people to log into the particular portal or access the particular website at one particular time, which is very difficult to coordinate. And this is just, you know, like a you know, small number. Uh, your application might be required to respond well for even, you know, 100,000 users. So manually performing the non-functional testing is really not possible. It has to be automated. So there are tools available for non-functional testing that you can utilize for automation and some of the tools are like load runner is, is one of the uh, tool neo load is another tool right jmeter is very uh, very popular open source tool so all those tools can be utilized for non functional testing the last point is around explaining uh, the types of functional testing and types of non functional testing so in functional testing you have unit integration system user acceptance testing um, regression testing and there are many many more uh, types of testing in functional testing in non-functional testing you have load stress uh, testing uh, spike testing volume testing and there are many more lists there but these are some of the common ones that you can explain you know load stress spike volume uh, and then in functional you can say there are some there are testing like unit integration system uh, and acceptance testing regression testing retesting so all these testing are in the functional testing category all right so this is uh, you know all about the differences between functional testing and non-functional testing along with examples which will really help you to explain um, to the interviewer very well what exactly the differences are what tools are used why non-functional testing is done and why uh, you know functional testing is done and what are the key differences between both functional and non-functional testing so that's all for this tutorial. Hope it was helpful. Please do share and subscribe. And thank you very much for watching.